Today we're doing three rustic cottage DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Okay, so number one is the pumpkin sign. I'm gonna use some stickers of your liking. We're gonna take some of this gorgeous wallpaper that came from the Dollar Tree. And this pumpkin was thrifted. I'm gonna give you these measurements so you can see. It looks like about 18 inches by 16 inches, but you can use whatever wooden pumpkin form you want to use and just cut yours down accordingly. So I'm getting an idea here of how I want to place this down and looking at the pattern. Once you make that decision, you can peel your backing off and place it down. I'm going to use my wallpaper um, flattener, a little tool here, and just rub that out. And then I want to show you with this wallpaper if you don't put it on here right, see that? You'll mess your pattern up. You want to continue your pattern by turning your paper correctly. Go ahead and peel your other side off. Start pressing that down from the inside outward. Then I just pressed on my edge with my fingernail so I would know where to trim it. Gonna cut that off with my scissors. And then press that out. Always press from the inside outward so you can make those bubbles run from you. They'll go right off the edges. Then in order to trim this up, you can certainly use whatever cutting tool that you have. I'm still getting used to this knife, although I am enjoying it. It's still sharp and I've used it on several projects. It comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree. If you press it kind of straight up and down against the edge of that pumpkin and you get it positioned correctly, you won't splinter the wood. I did in a few places, but it won't matter because you won't be able to see it. But just go around the edges as closely as you can. I've got a couple of places that look rough. See, it peels off very nicely. And then up here on the stem, we're going to do something different. You can continue your pattern with your scraps of paper if you would like, but I am going to cut that off of mine because I want to make a different type of stem. And then peel that off. Okay. Now I'm looking at embellishments for my sign, and I've got some leaves and some sunflowers that I got from the thrift store. This looks like maybe it came from Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I really didn't pay attention. Take your sanding block, go around your edges. This is going to flatten it down and give it a nice, clean, smooth edge. Okay, so I'm going to use a scrap of scrapbook paper, and I'm going to use that on the top. It just looks like a piece of wood. So I'm going to measure it out, use my glue stick, put that down on there really nicely all the way to the edges. You can overlap onto your wallpaper if you'd like, however you want to do this. And then I'm going to place that down right there. Rub it with my fingers, get my little tool, and press it down. Once that done is done, you know the routine, get your knife, whatever cutting tool you want to use, and go around the edges. And then, of course, after you have trimmed it off, then you're going to use your sanding block and make it nice and smooth. Just like so. Okay, so this is the base, and this is what we're going to embellish now. So you can use your Cricut or whatever you want to use. Um, but I'm using these large stickers that came from the thrift store. I was lucky enough that I had F-A-L-L. -L. You'll see me putting those down here. I'm using the ruler. I lined it up with the ridges of those um, stripes or lines. I'm just going to place them down just gently. I'm not going to push anything down until I'm sure that I have it where I want it. In a moment, you will see that I have slid the ruler down about two, maybe an inch and a half, two inches, and moved all those letters down some. So see there, they're down a little bit more. If you're going to use thin curly letters like this, you need to kind of be careful so that you don't pull your letters apart. They're kind of fragile. So you'll see me kind of patting it down and then going with the, the edges so I don't tear anything. Next, we're going to work on our bow. Simple bow. I've been doing a lot of these lately. Cross it over, and then once you get your tails the right measurement, I want these to be very long on this bow. Cut them down. 
then you're just going to pinch up your middle pinch it pinch it from underneath and above and there's your little bow take your clamp hold it in place and you can start on the next bow that will go on top these are both ribbons that came from the Dollar Tree same process here pinch the bottom up toward the middle pinch the top down toward the middle then you're going to take your two bows stack them on top of one another you can get a scrap of jute you can use floral wire you can use a twist tie you can use anything that you want here to hold these two bows together I'm going to use this jute give it a couple of tight knots so that my bow doesn't fall apart and then you're going to dovetail all of your ends You know, it wouldn't be a complete video from me if I didn't get completely out of the camera angle at some point. So you're welcome for that. Now I'm going to take some glue on the top a good bit because I want my bow to stay on here. I'm going to be tugging around on that bow a good bit. Um, we're going to do some interesting things with the tail, so just stay tuned for that. We don't want it to come loose. All right, so I got my leaves out, and I'm kind of sorting them into colors and shapes over here on the side. Just helps me to work. I'm going to take some hot glue and start putting those around on the top. I wanted to tuck one under there, so there it is. The colors are beautiful in these leaves. You can definitely use picks from the Dollar Tree, but this is what I had, and it ended up costing me less than it would have at the Dollar Tree by using these thrifted pieces. So I'm just gonna trim up what needs to be trimmed up and start laying my leaves down on the bottom. So we have some on the top and I'm gonna add some on the bottom. You know my plans always kinda get off track, but that's okay. When you're doing something for yourself, you do it to your own liking. And for some reason, no matter what plans I make for crafts, my mind takes me another place. I, I start looking at it, I stop thinking about it, and I just start going about how I feel, and I just put things down based on how I feel. Now, I suggest you do the same, because you'll be happy with your results if you do that. Stay true to yourself. Make something that's gonna bring you some joy. So these are just felt sunflowers, but they're so pretty. I love how colorful they are, and that they have the stitching makes them very pretty. So I'm just gonna fix my leaf there to make it lay flat. Add in another sunflower and leaf or two. So I'm saving my darker leaves, the red, the burgundies for another project. So be sure that you subscribe so you can see those if you're into the richer dark, dark colors. So I'm just taking a spool that I had for some deco, I think it was mesh. And I'm just going to curl that around like you curl your hair on a curling wand and just pull it out the bottom. And look at those cute little curls. This is what I think makes it cottage looking. Of course, the felt, you know, you got your mixed media here and, and your curly letters. So it gives it kind of a cottagey look, kind of a feminine look. So I thought the tails for this would be really cute. It's kind of playful, don't you think? But you do yours however you want. And you're going to take those tails to keep them from falling down because it's a lot of ribbon, so it's kind of weighty. Once you hang it, it may fall down over your letters, so just, you know, tack it down on all your little tails there. And this is how it looks so far. And I decided to use these butterfly stickers that I got from Dollar Tree. They did have a holographic background, but I took those off as soon as I bought them. So they are in two pieces. I just wanted the top layers. Um, I'm using a little hot glue and I'm just adding those down here and there where the little butterflies would normally light. Again, this is adding some cottage look to my rustic decor. And so I think this type of thing does the trick. What do you think? All right, last part for this is going to be putting your tag on here and I'm just using a hanger off of another project because I always save these. It's got a little hard plastic piece. I'm going to press it down into the glue here and here underneath my stem and that will complete my first project. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Making It My Own Instagram. 
Next product is a fall fox pot. These little things come from the Dollar Tree. They are so cute. I knew I had to have one. I just wasn't quite sure what to do with them until I saw it in person. And then I thought, yep, this is going to be a little planter pot. So he's perfect. Be sure you check yours and make sure it's not broken before you leave the store. I just have a foam ball here. Use a square. Use whatever you have as long as it fits. I'm going to add some hot glue on it so it won't move around. I have hot bush from the Dollar Tree. I have a thrifted pick. And then I have some maple garland from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to dismantle my maple garland, pull off all of these little pieces because we are going to transform this one garland into several leaf picks. So here's the stem where I cut my hot bush off. I cut those off halfway so that they would be short. Now I'm going to take the remainder of those and cut those off to use as picks to go in our leaves. So nothing is wasted here. Isn't that perfect? You can use a dot of glue if you need to, to hold these in place. I did on a few of these, but most of them fit nicely on the stem so they won't slide around. So simple. And you get a whole lot of picks for just the price, I guess, of $2. Okay, so you're going to push those in and place them around. Now you know with your arrangements, be sure that you are following some type of a pattern. You want to put your greenery um, down first. This is a short squatty arrangement, so I'm going to place these down and to not completely cover his face. I want to leave a little opening there. And I'm kind of following a pattern. You want to do somewhat triangle, so there's one, two, three, our hot bush is in a triangle. I'm going to add here so there's a triangle on the top as well. Then I'm going to add in some more of those where it makes sense to me. Here are the little berries from that garland. I'm using those too. And I'm just going to fluff those out. Okay. Now, moving on to this. I only had one of these picks. I'm going to take it apart because it was really too big for the project anyway. Pull all those pieces off. They don't have little openings on the end where you can push a pick through them. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to make picks out of these. Take one or two of these, put them together, line them up on another piece of that wire that you have, of the, uh, the pick wire, and then start twisting and pulling on the floral tape. When you pull a floral, the floral tape, that's what makes it start to stick. It's waxy. It's not sticky like a regular tape, so don't be misled by that. Put a little bit of pressure on that and twist it. Then when you pull the end loose, it will stick to itself and it makes the perfect little pick. It's dark green. You can get these um, floral tapes in a variety of colors, but it matches what I'm doing and you can't see anyhow down on the inside of this little short squatty arrangement. So I'm just going to place these around where they're not too close to one another so they're spread out and that the color green is spread through here. I think these colors are perfect for a cottagey feel. What do you think? Okay, so I have a couple of little pieces left that were broken and I'm just going to go in and add those in here. And by broken, I mean they were, I didn't have enough picks for them and some of them had a little bit of damage on the stem and they needed a little bit of extra love. So I just fixed them up and now I'm going to glue those in. Okay, so here's the base of a pick. We're going to cut all that randomness off the top. I'm going to use this little fall piece that I took off of a pumpkin that I did earlier. And I'm going to add that right on there. Trying to put it in a place where it's not so obvious that there's a big green pick behind it. Clean up any extra glue before it dries. And then I'm going to press that down into there. And it's really not even going to be noticeable. Oh my goodness, the cuteness. What do you think? I'm having all kinds of Dollar Tree cuteness with these projects. Love him. Okay, number three is a fall window box. This is another little cutie. We're going to use this 
window that came from the Dollar Tree. It did originally have a little sign on it that I took off and I've used this project, this um, window previously. So now I'm going to choose some ribbon and I'm gonna take my copper paint, take my family out and I'm gonna spray paint it. Once it's dried thoroughly, I'm gonna bring it back in and decide where I want to place it. I'm gonna take a thrifted box here. You can definitely get these types of boxes at the Dollar Tree. They're little box signs. Get one that is going to fit along with your window. I'm taking some brown paint. I'm gonna take it outside, spray, spray paint it with a good coat to cover up the blue. And then once it is thoroughly dry, I'm gonna bring it back in. I've just picked a little chipwood piece of um, a little scarecrow over there. I'm gonna use him in here too. I'm gonna take some of this faux leather ribbon from the Dollar Tree, flip it over, go right along that line in the window and glue it down. Careful with your fingers. Okay, now this is gonna give us a little more surface area to glue down that sign so that we'll have a good grip and it won't fall off. I'm just going to add some glue here and there, working quickly. You can certainly use some E6000, but you're gonna to have to wait a while for it to dry if you do that. So this works quicker for me. And it actually sticks very well to that faux leather ribbon. FYI. Okay, this is a little thrifted wreath, little tiny wreath. I think it was actually in like napkin rings or something, but I've been using them in projects and I love them. They're so cute. So rustic. I'm gonna add that on, put the glue where I think it needs to be, and I'm gonna use some popsicle sticks so that we can secure down our box to the window. So I don't want it to be sunken down, I want it to stand up. I'm gonna split a popsicle stick so that it fits without being seen. I'm gonna put my glue down on the side. It's gonna reach all the way up there to where my ribbon is. Do the same thing on the other side. I want everything to be secure. So I know I wanna put it here. I'm just doing a little measuring here. Adding my glue, I'm gonna flip it over and line it up carefully and then press it down. Hold it for a minute. When it starts to set up, then you can flip it over. I'm just pressing it down to make sure it's got a good hold. Then I'm gonna take an extra popsicle stick I'm gonna put glue on it and put it right over that crack right there. I did hold that for a while to make sure it was thoroughly dried. I'm gonna use my metal ruler and a piece of this round foam. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree. I'm not certain, but I think it, it was in a two pack that came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna cut that down so that it will fit inside the box. This accidentally gave me the perfect fit and I didn't have to glue it. And then I'm gonna take my little scraps here and I'm gonna use those two to fill in in the sides. It does not have to be perfect, guys. It really doesn't. And you'll see, everything's gonna stay in place nicely. Okay, so you could use scraps if you have scraps. This is some wood shred. You can use anything that you have. You can use raffia, you can use a hula skirt, whatever you wanna use. This looks like hay to me, so I thought it would be appropriate for this little pumpkin patch that we're gonna put outside of this window. I'm not even gluing it down because my picks will hold it in place. I've taken some boxwood picks that I have. They are just some that were thrifted. I've pulled them off and used them several times off of other bigger picks. I'm gonna put them beside my window. I'm using a thin pick to put on the back of my scarecrow so that he has legs to stand on. And then these are just some, the kind of sad looking pumpkins that I thrifted and I've used in other projects. I'm going to put pieces of this wire into it. It's a sturdy wire, so it's almost like a pick. You can certainly use picks, even toothpicks if you need to. Even a little hot glue in there if you need to keep it in place. I'm gonna put these at angles. I'm not gonna put them straight down because pumpkins don't naturally grow straight up and down. I'm gonna put one in the back, some in the front, and this is what we have so far. It needs one more little bush right there in the center, I think. We're gonna stand up Mr. Scarecrow and add a little hot glue to this little piece of pick that I had left out of that bunch. It's growing right out of the ground by his feet. And then one more pumpkin in here. Oh, 
Okay, so I've decided to carry that color from the bottom up to the top, and I'm going to use these ribbons. This particular plaid ribbon came from Dollar Tree, and the rickrack was given to me by a neighbor who was sorting through and going to donate some of her ribbons. I'm going to do really simple shoelace bow here. Pull it down, get it pretty, make it how you like it. If you keep fooling with it, you will make it perfect. Do the same thing here because we're going to layer them. This is a little bit more difficult to work with, but keep messing with it and you will get it right. And then it's going to go a little bit off to the side. I'm going to cut these at a slant. Add some hot glue. Put it just off to the side here. And you certainly don't have to glue down the tails if you don't want to. I felt it was pertinent at the time, so I went ahead and did it. All right, and then we're going to put this layer right on the top. And my napkin was sticking to my background there. But this is how he looks. Look at that cute. Wouldn't you love to look out your window and see that? That is so cute. Or walking down the street in the country, walking down the little gravel road and look over and see your neighbor's house with a beautiful wreath on their window. Perfect. Here are our three projects. These are our rustic cottage projects for fall. I think they're all appropriate. I think they have that little cutesy element. They are very affordable. They all feature Dollar Tree items from this year. I'm so happy you stopped by and I hope to see you again real soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.